Hey guys, Klauf here, and today I have a very quick one. It is a resource pack recommended by Space Nicholas. He was asking in the Discord how to remove the background to this scoreboard, and this might be something that other people are looking for. I'm not really sure. He asked it. I felt like trying to implement it myself, and I did get something, so here we are. Uh, but basically, the only way to do it is to use shaders, which whenever you have a hard problem that you're trying to solve in Minecraft that doesn't involve any kind of in-game logic, the answer is almost always shaders or nothing. And in this case, that was also the, the correct answer. It's shaders or nothing. And he did the little digging, which I appreciate that. That saved me time. But he did the digging and found the core shader that uses the uh, that manipulates the UI components. And then I just edited the vertex shader to actually do that. And so this video, in this video, I will show you guys the download and kind of show you how it works. Uh, there are some nuances, so let's just go through the what it does. So you can see on the right, the scoreboard is uh, transparent. The background is transparent on the scoreboard, uh, which maybe that's the effect you're looking for if you're at this video. Either you're interested or you want it. Um, but that that's what this does. It does have one little bug. So if you go to a chat scale of auto, uh, or the largest possible, the text chat will slightly overlap with the scoreboard, in which case I really can't make a decision which one to pick. There may be a better way to do this. If there is, I will try to fix that. Um, let me know in the comments. Probably Derdisco Hunt would know if there is a way to fix that. Um, but that's just the only bug that I could find so far. Also, there is a limit to how wide the um, scoreboard can be while it still makes it invisible. And we'll go over why that's the case. But for most general use cases, this is going to work just fine uh, for most of the chat scales. Uh, so that's pretty much all there is to this. It just makes the background invisible and it displays for all of the different scoreboards. And it doesn't really break anything else, such as the visibility of the uh, menu here or the F3T menu. It still is red, uh, just like it should be. Uh, which is pretty nice. And so the way it does that is using a vertex shader. So let's just go into how the pack works. So what Space Nicola found was that in the Minecraft shaders core extension, there's a shader called position color, which affects the background color of various UI components. It actually impacts a lot of different things. So let's take a look at what it exactly impacts. And I'm going to do that just by saying vertex color. Uh, let's say vertex color equals vec4, 1.0, 0.0, 0.0, 0, 0.0. Okay, so these are all the things that it affects. And then I'm going to hit enter down there. And it will make everything that it affects red. Oh, actually, sorry, it makes everything it affects transparent. But you can already see what this is doing. And so now we have a bright red. You see that the scoreboard is bright red. The chat is bright red. The text bar is bright, bright red, and um, the void horizon is also bright red. And this is a uh, pretty interesting behavior. Uh, now, in order to specifically pick the scoreboard, because this does have what we need, you basically just need to do some conditionals. And so the conditional that you need to do, uh, and I will show you how I did that in the debug mode. So let me go ahead and do that. So in the debug mode, I basically said everything's red and then make the scoreboard blue. And that was my goal. And so you can see that I accomplished that basically by taking the transformed position vector because the pre-transformed position vector called position, actually the values on it, I wasn't able to figure out what they actually correspond to. When I printed the values as a color, they were all very, very tiny, low color values. And so I really couldn't differentiate. They might all be zero or they might be very close to zero. And so I wasn't able to figure out what those values are. You may be able to better isolate something if you get the values before they're transformed through the viewport, but I wasn't able to actually figure those out and it would take a lot of additional work to try and pass those numbers uh, to some printing thing that would print the text on the screen. So that's kind of hard to do. Uh, and I went with the quickest approach here. Now, once we have those transformed values, 0.0, .0 this was a little tricky for me to figure out, but 0.0, .0 is the middle of the screen. Negative in the Y direction is the left of the screen. Uh, so normally the uh, origin is the top left, but after it's been transformed, it moves it to the center uh, using these various values here. Uh, then basically negative 0.5 in the Y direction means halfway down the, the half of the screen. So about uh, a quarter from the bottom. And then 0.85 is 
more like a little bit less than a quarter from the top. And so those two will select these top vertices. And since we are in a vertex shader, a dot VSH, we're only dealing with the vertices associated with the background. So any uh, pixels on the edges uh, that it may use, I think it uses more than just the four corners. Um, but essentially we're picking these vertices up here and we want to make them blue and we want to pick any vertice in this kind of box region. And so we also need to specify the X because if we just did Y, it would also pick the ones inside the chat component here. Uh, and so to specify the, the X component, the horizontal component, we say ones that are greater than a quarter of the halfway of the screen. And so the middle of the screen is here and a quarter of the way to it, where one is the very edge is roughly right here where my mouse is. And so anything past that, we're going to pick uh, that way. It also works for the uh, larger GUI scales. Then we also pick anything less than or equal to one. So right up against the screen probably could have gone a little bit uh, more specific than one. I could have done like 0.95, but I just went to one because I didn't want to mess with it too much. Um, but yeah, so this basically with these set of parameters for X and Y, it will isolate the scoreboard in almost every case, it will also pick some stuff inside UIs. So if you go inside here, you'll see blue here, um, but that's not going to actually impact anything. When we set the transparency to zero, nobody will really be able to tell the difference. Uh, and so we just go here and we just set the alpha to zero. And so we say the color it's supposed to be is the color it's supposed to be, but the alpha, if it's in this box is zero, just like you would expect. And so when it goes to the fragment shader, it implements those colors and it just makes the alpha zero. So it's transparent. And that is the rundown of how this works. Very simple. Just wanted to get it out there so that in case somebody is Googling or looking for it, they can find it easily. Hopefully, if you guys thought this was useful, please leave a like. I will try to have another video out before Christmas. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.